Hey guys, welcome back. I'm Bill and this is Trying to Stand where I discover new things in pop culture because I've been living under a rock for so long. And welcome back to another day of Thanks Standing where I'm going over things that I am grateful for through the form of extra content for you, the people who I'm the most thankful for. So today I'm doing an artist that's been suggested quite a lot, but moreover, they will be performing with 21 Pilots on the 13th here in Chicago. And I will be seeing that. I will be there for that. To see 21 Pilots and I don't know how, but they found me. It's a long name. Whatever happened to one word names like Cher or Madonna or Panic at the Disco? I believe you referred to them once, Miss, as IDK How. Mm -hmm. It just reminds me of that horrible uh, cell phone commercial. IDK, my BFF Rose. Jill. Jill? I thought it was Rose because she's an old lady. No. Whatever. Anyway, we're going to be starting with Choke. I'm already all about this. I mean, what? Dear YouTube, my videos are not meant for people under the age of 13. Let's remember that. No? No, wait, yeah, children don't dab anymore, so dab, dab, dab the YouTube changes away. Anyway, this is Choke. Mm -hmm. This is gonna be about choking other people like sexy time. I like the sound so far though. Yeah. Yeah. Why are you talking to me directly? It is neat. Like and subscribe. That's pretty much it. Thanks for the heads up. You're welcome. Thanks for taking the time to talk to me. I really like the singer. Like, he kind of reminds me a little bit of, like, he has, like, a Freddie Mercury kind of a sound to it. Like, that upper registry, but it has, like, a bit of, like, that widespread kind of, like, taffy wail to it. Does that make sense? Like, it's it's sharp, but it stretches out. I really liked that sound. The song was sad. I was hoping it'd be sexy. Don't kink shame me. Let's see the lyrics. Well, it's a definitely a very upsetting <laughs> vibe. It, it's it's weird. It felt like a personal exchange, but there was nothing very specific about it. It was just a very general bite your tongue, choke yourself to sleep, very intense things to be saying to someone. Yeah, yeah. A lot of I'm gonna burn, if I could burn this town. Maybe it's about like the resentment of your environment. This is definitely something I would have listened to a lot in high school when I'm like trying to like get out of my little town to go live in a big city so it, it kind of gave me that kind of vibe like just a general resentment because like I said it wasn't like ah you found this other person or you did this to me it was just like I'm just sick of you like it had such a ambiguity to it that it felt very universal like more of a environment or atmosphere kind of a thing it could be society but I don't know it just felt like a lot of just like that step after frustration where you're just over it you haven't forgiven anyone you haven't really gotten over it but you're just done like you're just fed up it this is just how it is but I really like the sound of it I love there's really great instrumental work but there's also a really nice distortion like a good level of the two where it didn't feel overpowering or overwhelming and I could still hear and appreciate the instrumental work, but it gave this layer of flavor. You could feel the story of the song distancing itself from the subject material. The more we kept repeating like, you know, oh, I hate this, I hate you, we all hate each other. There is no solution to this, it's not getting better. There's no like, oh, and then I, then I woke up and realized I didn't have it so bad. Like it, that's even my bad Freddie Mercury impression while I'm trying to sound like them. But like there was no feeling of a resolution. It felt like a cycle and then having that distortion kind of towards the end, that rage radio filter kind of sound, it just felt like old news to them. It's just a constant cycle. But I really liked it. If this came on in like a, a bar or on shuffle while I'm walking around, like it has a really nice groove to it. It still felt very active. And I, I really enjoyed that because having that over it feeling, the, the, the singer and the band could almost feel over it on a technical level and they don't. They just feel very present. Like, like I said, like that clarity of like, 
This ain't getting any better. This isn't changing. This is just how I'm gonna feel. It's a very complicated emotion to be able to relay through music that well. I really liked that. Do it all the time. Is it the sex word? I think I'm just gonna assume all these songs are sexy and watch like nothing about sex at all. They're actually an abstinence only band. IDK how, but you have to wait until you're married. Where music is created not by man, but by machine. Oh dear. We're taking over the world. Woo! Crap, I love his voice. He looks like Moriarty from Sherlock. Woo! Do it all the time. Ah! The mannequins are starting to really creep me out. Ha! <laughs> me. Damn! I love his sound. <laughs> Shit. First off, his voice is amazing. Still has like a little bit of like a smoky quality, but when he like flips up into like that upper kind of registry and starts to mix more and goes into like his headspace, it still has like a, a clear and present sound and he just makes it sound so effortless. It's like a yo-yo just whoop. So by the visuals, obviously it's satirical, talking about the auto-tuning and the, the interference with music to make it sound a certain way. I enjoyed that a lot. Taking that vintage aesthetic and pairing it with more of a modern problem, A, it's very visually pleasing and interesting, but it also lets you know just how long this has been going on and establishes like the roots in media manipulation before you even get into the current audio manipulation to even like perfect the sound. And I like how like kind of aggressive the lyrics are, but it's also so soothing, like almost like a hypnotic, like we do this all the time. It's a victimless crime, taking your innocence, corrupting your mind. It's a lot of really intense lyrics, but it's set to such a chill and relaxed vibe, and I think that's why they're pretending to be doctored by a studio. I think also, then when he starts to break down, like it's overloading because they keep adding more and more, breaking their own machines because they're, they're getting so greedy and they're taking so much and they're overloading so much. It's almost like the joke is they're doing it so much they're breaking their own machines. Like they just keep pumping fallacies, you know, audio correcting, market manipulation, and all this stuff to music so much that they're like, they've exposed themselves, like they can't even keep up. Like it's literally overloading their own equipment. They're doing it so much. I always admire that the pairing of two different feelings or mindsets. And, and this one, instead of being like, oh, a happy song to a dour beat or a upbeat beat to a dour song, this one was like a relaxed vibe about a really aggressive thing. But the song's so casual about it because this happens so much, driving home the further point of this is more common than you think. Literally the lyrics, we do it all the time. This wasn't like a, ah, they're manipulating us. It's like, yeah, they super are. Anyway, toast. The drummer just staring down the camera while he's going, like it, it's off-putting, yes, and adds this felt more into that like hypnotic trance or like even they, the artists, are being manipulated or pushed or driven into certain avenues and choices. Like I felt like they were under that spell as well. But I also really liked the song. And next we have Social Climb. So this is about tweeting. This is about the gram. This is about the difference between Vine and TikTok. Can someone please explain it to me, but also follow me on TikTok. Ooh, we're going a little, little further into retro technology. Ooh. Ooh, I like that. Ceremonial <laughs> hat. Yes, overly dramatic drummer. Huh. That was really cool, but I, are they, so they both kind of tie in uh, social climb and then uh, do it all the time. Hey, they rhyme. They both tie into that like satirical sort of negative look on media, specifically like the music industry. This one, it was more breaking down and kind of poking fun at uh, music videos and like even going so far as to label each 
stage or each uh, each stereotypical thing that you would find in a music video now, which was really cool, really funny. So having two come together under that umbrella so closely, I wonder if they're pissed about Medio. They're new, they have a lot of room to grow in, in following and presence and in size, but I wonder it stems from that frustration of not even enjoying what's doing better than you, what's more popular than you, you know? Because it's not like they're making fun of like the food industry, something that they're their work has nothing to do with. It's the music industry. It's their world. It's something that they're trying to be a part of and break into. I'm not mad about it. It's so fascinating. Is this just your frustration at the whole thing? Like you're just getting tired of it? Because it was literally breaking down like, and here's where people showcase their talents. And they had someone dancing, someone eating fire. And I found that really interesting. It comes across like as if, like as if they're mad. But it's called Social Climb. Since this one, they, they broke down the steps of a music video but then had those steps in the video as well. Maybe it's addressing like paying your dues or like doing things that you don't necessarily want to do to make it. That realm of reasoning where it's like, well, sometimes you have to do what is popular even if you don't like it to get to a place where you can then change those trends. So maybe it's just like paying their dues or trying to copy the people who are more successful than them in the hopes of moving up, social climbing. I really liked the song and I loved how it had this feeling of like like that melancholy like not quite having your heart in it which complements the story that they're telling of like I'm doing this for you and then looking at himself in the mirror paying your dues it's doing the grind it's doing things you might not love turning to himself in the mirror and saying I'm doing this for you like doing this in the hopes of servicing your work and your future by doing what you're being told to do in the hopes of getting the attention of more people so your your music can move forward forward. But addressing it like that is so interesting. Maybe they're getting so sick of pop culture and media that they're inviting more people to be more open and honest and do what we're doing and point it out, make fun of it, address it, talk about it. Because it even like it's all after the fact. It's text. Like it's that step of doing it after. Like sure we followed the rules and then we put our own spin on it or we like kind of kept one foot out the whole time. Like it's like a call to like have someone be different with you or like see things the way that they do. Yes, because then when I'm with you and staring into the mirror eventually and like just always after a certain point, like when I'm with you and looking at himself in the mirror, it's because he feels alone. Like he's trying to get this message out and the only person who's listening is himself or a fear of no one taking him seriously or listening to him when they get this video or this song or this message, this vibe out. Now we've moved a little more forward in time. It's more of a, instead of like the joke of we're playing along, now it's sitting there going like, hey, like let's be a little different. Let's shake things up. Let's not keep doing this. As we're still moving forward, is this still going to be the norm? Combining the two like that, it then makes me think that he's staring at himself in the mirror because A, he's not being heard, but also because he's bored. I really like it. I really like using that vehicle of picking apart the music industry and then using it as an avenue to also pick apart social constructs. You want to conform to social norms so that way you can fit in and you can keep moving forward and it sounds like they are getting tired of that and don't want to. They're looking around and everyone else is still standing in place ready to be told when to move and what to do and he's just staring in the mirror and it's like no one, no one in this room gets me. No one in this industry gets me or feeling like no one in this industry gets me. I like that a lot. And next we have Absinthe. Ooh, okay. Ooh, damn. Woo! Yeah, dude. Okay, I'm sorry. Wow, I really like that sound. YouTube then started playing uh, Everything I Wanted by Billie Eilish, or he did that video. Joke's on you, YouTube. I really liked that. Like a take on like grunge. Felt like a little more gravelly, a little dirtier, but then his voice like also had like more of a heavier rock kind of quality to it at times. Like the character's emotionally losing control. Really started to kick into this other gear. Like you could feel another cylinder in the engine just start lighting off. Like his voice just started to like keep going, widen, but also sharpen. It was, that was really cool. 
cool. After having so many layers to these other songs, I don't, I don't want to 100% just commit it to like, oh man, we really like shots here at IDK How. <laughs> IDK How Bar and Grill opening in Vegas 2023. I don't know how I got to this Bar and Grill Vegas 2023. It's absent, so there's elements also about like hallucinations as well as spirits. Burn all the witches. I don't believe whatever this is, whatever they give you, stop drinking it down. Stop believing what these people are, are, are telling you. Stop believing what these people are selling you. Not specifically about like black magic or witches. Like it's almost like there's a whole world here. There's a whole setup of either like dishonesty or con men. It makes you think of like being poisoned or drugged or being manipulated. Like, I don't know, it puts me in this realm of feeling like a warning that you're being taken advantage of. Because it's like, these spirits are your prison. I hear voices, I see visions. Sure, absinthe gets you drunk and is a hallucinogenic, or the wormwood is. Why do I know so much about absinthe? Like, it makes me think of like media manipulation. You know, I don't believe what this is until you burn all the witches. Like, I'm not gonna believe this thing is real or what I'm being told is real or valid until you get rid of the people spreading lies. Like, it's a warning of being deceived or it's a warning about not believing at least everything that you hear and everything that you see. Especially when you start to put in like everything else that's been, the topics that have been hit in the previous songs as well, I, I feel like it's a more metaphorical approach to it. I don't know, I think, <laughs> I think it's good that this was like the fourth song, otherwise I be like, wow, they really like Halloween. It puts me in this place of more thickly veiled warning than the other songs. Wind me up or you'll wind up dead. I don't care what mama says. Like people are gonna tell you like not to believe him, like not to second guess what's being, what's being given to you. Change with me or fail or like fall. But it, it's interesting too, because after picking apart the music industry and, and a handful of their songs, now they're becoming a part of it. And I wonder if it's them like talking about how they're kind of on guard because they, they don't want to be overly controlled or manipulated by a studio or being told what to do. Maybe it's a warning they might be or might be one day. Maybe it's a warning of even their own futures. I really like the sound of it too. Like if I wasn't comparing his voice to like a, a a different style of Freddie Mercury tone, I'd be doing it now. That like heavy vibrato wailing, like almost to the point where it trills. I love it, it sounds so good. I love his voice. That song was kind of upsetting. It's soothing upsetting. It's, it's a comforting pain. I really like that. And to close out this trying to stand on this thanks standing time, uh, we have Modern Day Cain. We are the modern day canes. That was a Book of Mormon joke. Come back in time with me to 2013, children. Here they are, the I don't know. Ooh, there's the 80s sound. God, they sound so good with that like synthy 80s vibe. Third Eye or Illuminati? Oh, and the glitter gals are there to help them too. Woo! There you go. And then right back into that like apathetic stare. Like there, I did the guitar solo, you happy? Ew, ew, the audio, oh. I love, ooh, I love when they, they keep sampling different like eras visually as well as musically. Like that one had a little bit more of that like synthy electronic kind of sound and pop to it. I really liked that. Like, holy crap, that looked and sounded so cool. I don't know, it gave me like really like conspiracy kind of vibes. This one's, uh, this one's kind of tough. For me. I don't have the biggest knowledge on uh, religious subtext, but I know that Cain was the bad brother, right? He killed his brother. But like, it, it gives me this vibe of being like, of like wanting to expose a person or a crime or a conspiracy. It's not a TV show, it's public access. You know what I mean? Like, oh, they are a music band and it instantly command, the song they play instantly commands you to dance. That's enough. And then the ending where like, they're just kind of standing there after the song, like no one bows, no one says thank you. There's no cheers. There's not really sound at all, really. It just, it makes everything feel so hollow. And then combining it with the, the title, Modern Day Cain, it feels like, like punishment. This is the sin that I will confess to release myself from consequence. Like, getting away with it. Like this could be like a self-examination and a reflective kind of piece, but it felt very external. 
like even even the visuals of it all it was like the 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 triangle on his forehead either a third eye like predicting this or even the triangle like the illuminati or the hidden eye like i don't know it gave me like a really strong conspiracy vibe i have also recently been up until 4 a.m learning about the sinking of the olympic and whether or not it was the titanic i could just be kind of reading a lot into this in, into like subtext that way because like that's also that's the era era of like roswell and area 51 like they've been experiencing that that period period of time when conspiracies were starting to grow and grow and grow and Big Brother and the, the government is lying to you. And I don't know, it, it felt like they were calling out like scandals, conspiracies, like either imploring people to come clean and confess to release themselves of sin or the altering the story, altering the reality, lying to yourself. Cause even the lyric, you've done a little wrong. Story of Cain, he killed somebody. That's a lot of wrong. You swear you didn't do it conjuring up a fiction. Like they're like downplaying it like talking yourself out of confessing almost or talking yourself out of how big of a deal it really is, like playing it down in your own mind. I really liked that. Like that was, it was really cool. I love the sound and damn it, I love his voice. Like when he hits like those highs and then his face goes back to just being so apathetic or like dead eyed, even if it's not apathy, if it's like supposed to be mind control or something, it's really engaging to watch. They have a really incredible uh, presence, both he and the drummer. Cause even like the drummer, like staring to the camera and other videos are like getting really into it and then just completely stopping with him. Like both of them are really good at upping their energy and then just sinking it back down. I would almost argue that they might even be playing a character if not a caricature i really like how they present their work i really like their sound i and i like how as we started to move forward in time with the visuals the influences of the music started up navigating that timeline with the visuals i thought that was super cool like as soon as they started to have like colored leather and you know got rid of the the loafers and the yellow socks suddenly we had more keyboard presence and it was more of like a synthy guitar kind of a sound i really liked that that was really cool. I'd really like to check out more of their stuff and I can't wait to see them live in December. Like now I'm even more excited for the show because now I get 21 Pilots and IDK Town. But yeah, there you guys go. That was my uh, initial thoughts and impressions and breakdowns of I don't, IDK How. I don't know how they found me. I don't know how I got here. I don't know how to end this video. I don't know how, but they found me. That was my initial thoughts on I don't know how, but they found me. But what did you guys think? Let me know in the comment section down below. Don't forget to like the video if you did. You want more from this band? Subscribe if you want more from this channel. And I will see you tomorrow with more Think Standing Goodness. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I appreciate each and every one of you. And take care of yourselves, please.